Hi guys, got another video. I'm doing this again, having so many problems getting this up and going. Anyways, we're going to be in Luke, Luke chapter 3, 3, 4, and so much more. Um, and I was led here because of Isaiah, as I'm reading Isaiah. But let's go on. Okay, so chapter 3, verse 4. It is written in the words of the prophet Isaiah, um, a voice crying in the wilderness. That's John, right? Prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. That's John. Okay. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places made straight, and the rough ways smooth. So basically, oh, mountains up here, valleys down here, and everything's going to go foo. All right. All, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. All flesh. Wow. Okay. That's pretty cool. So let's go on. There's more. Um, in verse 15, chapter 3, verse 15. Now the people were in expectation and all reason in their hearts about John, whether or not he was the Christ. And here he is rebuking him, going, no, 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 no. I'm the one that's the voice in the wilderness, right? Preparing the way. So then he says, John answered, saying to all, Indeed, I baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loosen. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Okay, so he's talking about Jesus. And here's more description. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor. Threshing floor referred to the earth. Okay? He will gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn up with unquenchable fire. It's like a fire. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right? They chose not to worship the, gold, the golden statue. And they were thrown in the fire. Three went in, four were seen. Okay. At the end, heaven and earth shall pass away. Right? And heavenly, heavenly bodies burned up. The earth burned up. And then a new heaven and a new earth. It says it in Isaiah. It says it in Revelations. Um, so who will stand on that great day? Okay. Um, so then let's go down to uh, verse 21. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus was also baptized. He was the last one baptized. See, all the people were baptized. And then it was his turn that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heavens opened. What? The heavens were opened? Yes. Okay. What does that remind me of? Um, let's see. Revelations chapter 6. I'll wait until you get down there. Okay. Um, verse 12. And I looked, and he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. A great earthquake. Right? Um, it was so great, every moon, every mountain and every island was moved out of its place. That's a great earthquake. It's a worldwide earthquake. Is that when uh, the dead in Christ rise? I don't know. I think so. so. So there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. What would do that? Um, I think a huge ash cloud, or a nuclear cloud. I mean, I don't know. Right? Um, to darken the sun and the moon. Okay. It says in verse 13, And the stars fell from the heaven as fig trees dropped in the late figs when shaken by a mighty wind. Could it be a galactic solar wind? Okay. The stars fallen to earth. Now, look at the timing. There's a great earthquake. And the falls, the stars fall from heaven. Stars are angels. You can see it in Revelation chapter 1. Okay. And so here we have this event of 
a worldwide earthquake, stars falling, or angels having heaven, and a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when when um, when rolled up, and every mountain and every island moved out of its place. Wait, the sky opened up, and the Holy Spirit fell down. Now, sky is receding. Many people have, have had dreams about this, right? The kings of the earth, the great man and everything, they hid themselves in their caves, which is really D-U-M-B, um, and said to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us, because from the face of him, who's him, right? All will see. Didn't we say that? Right? In, um, in Luke? Luke, 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 Luke. Yes, we did. That all will see him. Okay, so it says in Revelations chapter 6, verse 17, For the great day of his wrath has come, and who will able to stand? Who is able to stand? So this earthquake is so violent, nobody's going to be able to stand up. Will the saints stand? I think because since it's a great day of wrath, we're not appointed to wrath, are we? So I think that's the timing of the, the snatching away. And <clears throat> who, who is worthy? Nobody's worthy, but by grace. Okay? So, in Hebrews, just a side note, the ones in the 40 days, 40 nights, see, this is kind of like, Everything wraps together. Um, but this is Revel Hebrews chapter 2, verse, or chapter 3, verse 6. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing in the hope, firm to the end. Okay? Therefore the Holy Spirit says, Today I... If you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts in rebellion as in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers were tested and tried, saw many of my works 40 years, right? Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they will not, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. I swore in my wrath, see, in his wrath, they shall not enter on my rest. Why? Okay. And, and it all explains it here, and you can read it, um, that they didn't believe. Because they didn't believe, they will not enter into his rest. Okay? And it says here in, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3, For we who have, who have believed do enter the rest, as he said, I have sworn in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Okay? Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, right? So we already knew who was going to be entering into his rest and trusting the Holy Spirit and trusting Jesus, trusting Father God. There's people that just won't believe. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but some will just not believe. Now, back to Luke, chapter 4, verse 19 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. When is the year of the Lord? When is the day of the Lord? Well, he then closed the book, gave it to the attendant, and sat down. Why did he stop there? Because the next part hasn't happened yet. And he said to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. Okay. Now, to Isaiah. Chapter 61. Um, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Right? All of that to proclaim. And uh, 61, Isaiah 61, verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he stopped. What's the next part after that? The day of vengeance of our God. Day of Vengeance. I think we're, we're, you know, we're there. 
Vengeance is not wrath. There's a difference. Recompense. Okay? So repent of doing evil and turn to God. Ask Him. He'll wipe away the sins and bring you into the family. So it says to comfort those who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, oil for the joy of mourning, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Okay? He's going, I'm going to take away the bad, evil stuff, and I'm going to give you something good. There's more. And then they call, that they may be called trees of righteousness. Yes, the saints are called trees. And there's different types of trees. They're mentioned through the Bible. You know, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. We're going to get a garment, a new body, right? Oil, Holy Spirit, and counseling us and comforting us. Instead of what we've been going through, ashes. Well, where did he say? He's going to, what? Thresh the floor and the chaff will be burned. Right. We're going to be walking on ashes. Um, but we'll be comforted. We'll be consoled. Where? In the Mount of Zion, the holy city of God. Now, I wasn't going to go there, but I'll go there. Isaiah chapter 60 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. Who's the light of the world? That's, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Right? That's Yeshua. He is the light of the world. Arise and shine. Who's arising and shining? And I always read this stuff, you know, thinking, oh, he's talking about us. Or, or no, wait, he's talking about um, Jesus. But there's so much more. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, <laughs> rise over us, and, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. Oh, do we uh, come to his light? Yes, the kings to the brightness of your rising. So all of a sudden, this massive city, because this is talking about Mount Zion, right? And more. Lift up your eyes all around and see all... They all gather together. They come to you, your sons from far. Your daughters shall be nursed by your side. They shall see and become radiant. We will see Yeshua in the Holy Spirit, in the air. We will become radiant. Your heart will swell with joy because the abundance of the sea has been returned to you. The wealth of Gentiles. Okay, so... As I'm reading this, I'm thinking, oh, okay, you know, here's God, here's Mount Zion, right? And he says in chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 7, They shall ascend with my acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify my the house of my glory. Okay? Ascend. We will ascend. Okay, there's more. Who are these who fly like a cloud? What? Yes, we'll be able to fly, right? And never get tired. We'll have wings. It says it, you know. Um, and like doves to their roosts. So, yeah, this flying city and we'll be fly getting, flying to and fro. Yeah, okay. To the name of the Lord your God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. We will have glorified bodies, the garments, our garments, a new body. Right? And, um, and he says, In my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have mercy on you. Therefore your gates shall be open continually. Whose gates? Zion. Okay? They shall not shut by day or night. Right? And I'm just going to go through and, and pick out certain um, verses. For the nation and the kingdom which will not serve you shall perish. Okay? And then it talks about Oh, the glory of Lebanon, right? The cypress tree, the pine, the box. Who are those? Wait, those are the trees. Mm -hmm. The trees, the trees, the trees. Um, but we are called trees, you know? And um, 
They shall call you the city of the Lord Zion, the Holy One of Israel. And this is uh, in chapter 60, verse 14. See, he's talking about the city, but it's also talking about us being there. Okay? And it talks about, uh, you shall know that I, the Lord, your, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. This is verse 16. Okay? And violence shall no, be, no longer be heard in your land, neither wasting or destruction in your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Walls and gates. Yes, Isaiah measures, I think it's Isaiah or Ezekiel, measure the temple. Okay? It's also measured in uh, Revelations. And this That's uh, chapter 18. Now chapter 19. The sun no longer shall be your light by day, nor the brightness shall the moon give you light. But the Lord will be to you an everlasting light, your, your God, your glory. The sun shall no longer go down, nor the moon withdraw itself. Whoa, wait a minute. Okay, so we're finding out in Revelations that the sun is turned to black and the moon to blood. And then... They go away. They vanish. They burn up the, the heavenly bodies, right? So he creates a new heaven and a new earth, and there's no more sun. Why? Because the sun, the glory of God, will be the light. How do I know? Look at Isaiah chapter 60, verse 20. Your sun shall no longer go down nor shall your moon withdraw, withdraw itself. For the Lord will be an everlasting light, and the days of your mourning have ended. Right? Also, the, your people shall, be, shall all be righteous. Wait, your people? The people of Zion. Right? They shall inherit the land and the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten the time. And then it starts going to Isaiah, chapter 60. See? So, he will take his wheat into his barn. What? Yes. Now, you saw that in Luke, that the the wheat in the barn and those that don't believe will not enter into their rest. Where is our rest going to be? In heaven? Mount Zion. I, I'm either one, anyone. I'd be happy standing at the door of Mount Zion or in heaven or at the wedding feast, opening the door, letting people in, you know, be a doormat. I mean, I, I, yeah. The day with the Lord is better than a thousand without. Okay? So, <clears throat> let's go to back to Isaiah 59, and we'll wrap this up. 18. Well, we'll go to 16. And he saw there was no man and wondered why there was no intercessor. Who is our intercessor? Yeshua, Jesus is. Okay. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. And he put on the righteousness as a breastplate over his heart. Okay. And the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance, right? The day of vengeance. That's why he stopped in 61 and didn't go on to... He said about, you know, the year of the Lord and then the day of vengeance. That's why. He puts on the garment of vengeance for his clothing and clad with a zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay. He's coming back. He said he's leaving, preparing a place for us. It sounds like Mount Zion. And then he's going to come back and repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. The coastlands will be fully repaid, so they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising sun. Hmm, Japan? 
Okay, when the enemy comes like a flood, Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Against who? Satan is devil, and they're going to be what? The fallen angels fall, right? Revelation 6. Um, like a fig tree in a violent, a, a, a mighty wind, right? So now he's saying, I'm going to come up against them. Isaiah 59, 20. The Redeemer will come to Zion, and those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them, my spirit who is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, or from the mouth of your descendants, says the Lord, This from this time forevermore. Okay? He's going to pour out his spirit, going to put his word, the law, in our hearts. And there's going to come a time to arise and shine, for your glory has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Right? It's a dark day. Day of wrath. And who can stand? So, please, please, please be the wheat and not the chaff. Please. Be the one that flies, right? Fly like a cloud and with wings of eagle and run and never get tired. Yeah, we're going to have a, a garment, a glorified garment. And how do I know this? Well, he says, you can't put old wine in new wine sacks. It'll burst, right? You can't take this spirit out of this fleshly body and put it into a glorified body. He says he's going to give us a new spirit, a new body. It's going to be awesome. You know, is there going to be some rough times till we get there? Yeah, but that's okay. Endure to the end. Love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.